Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the impeller and seal kit on your dishwasher. It's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, you will need to remove the dishwasher from the cabinets. So first thing you'll need to do is to disconnect the power. So locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker or remove the appropriate fuses. Next you'll want to pull off the access panel at the bottom. You need to turn off the inlet water supply, disconnect the drain, and also disconnect the inlet water to the valve behind that access panel. Lastly, you'll want to disconnect the retaining screws for those mounting tabs that secure the dishwasher to the bottom of your cabinets, and then we can pull the dishwasher out or we can do our repair. Now before we pull the dishwasher out of the cabinets, you'll next want to open up the dishwasher, remove all of the dishes that are in that dishwasher, as well as the bottom rack, set it aside, and then we'll be able to do the repair. Now we've turned the dishwasher completely upside down so that it's easier to access the motor assembly. Now the next step is to remove that. We'll begin by disconnecting the wire harness. So depress the two locking tabs, one on top and one on bottom of that harness connector. And pull it out. Now we also need to remove a single retaining bolt on the bottom of that motor. It's a 3 8 hex head on it. So we're going to use a long nut driver. We'll slide in underneath that motor shield and unthread that retaining bolt. And we'll remove the bolt as well as that shield. And we'll set those both aside. Now next we're going to grasp that motor and we're going to turn it just slightly counterclockwise. Now we'll unlock it from the pump body and we'll just carefully pull it backwards. It may be a little tight but it won't come out of there. And we're just going to set that aside for a moment. Inspect the inside of that pump chamber, make sure that there's no broken glass or foreign objects in there. Check the base of that chopper blade, make sure all four legs are intact on that. Now we can remove the old impeller from the motor. And if we look at the back of it as we turn that impeller, you will see some fins on that rotor inside the motor that are actually turning. So we're going to take a small flat blade screwdriver and carefully insert it through one of these slotted openings to prevent that from turning. So carefully insert that screwdriver in through the back and allow the fins to come up against it and then while grasping the front of that impeller we're just going to turn it counterclockwise until it turns free. And we'll spin that off of the motor shaft. Once we've removed the impeller, we can set that aside. Our seal assembly is embedded in this little housing, so we'll simply rotate that to the keyways line up, pull that away from the motor, and then just set the motor aside. Next, need to pop that old seal assembly out of that housing. You can either take a screwdriver and pry it out from the front, which are more likely to damage it there. So we suggest it you come from the back side and just put a little bit of pressure on the metal portion of that that you can see. And pop it out. And then discard the old impeller and seal assembly. Before we install the new one, we'll clean up this area. Now that we've cleaned that area out, we're next going to take the new seal assembly. And first of all, inspect the carbon face on it. This is the actual sealing surface and it's very brittle because it's made of carbon. Verify that there are no chips or cracks in that. And if so, you'll need to discard it and get another one. Then we'll just moisten the edge of that rubber covering on that seal and then we'll fit it into the housing. So just line that up squarely in that opening. 
and use even pressure when pushing that seal into place. Make sure that we don't crack that carbon face. So if it appears to be going in crooked, just remove it and start over. And then inspect it, make sure it's sitting level all the way around. We can now install that portion onto the pump motor. And if you look at the base of that pump motor, you'll see an arrow embossed in that housing. And we're gonna line that up with an arrow on the assembly. Now next we'll assemble the impeller portion. We'll begin by taking the flat washer, laying that in the base of the impeller. Now there's also a stainless seal surface that fits into that rubber grommet. If it's come apart in the packaging, just verify that we have the flat edge facing out. Carefully fit it into that rubber bushing set that into the base of the impeller. Again, we need to make sure that it sits nice and flat. And now we're ready to thread that whole assembly onto the motor. So you can start by hand. And then we'll rotate that motor around. Again, we'll use our screwdriver and we'll block those fins while we tighten that impeller from the front. So again, just slide that flat blade screwdriver through the opening in the back, rotate the motor until you come up against those fins. And then turn the impeller from the front of the motor until it tightens up. screwdriver and now we're ready to put that whole assembly back into the dishwasher. Keep in mind that that mounting bolt hole will need to be at the bottom so we'll sit that whole assembly into the opening make sure it's flush Rotate it clockwise until it locks into position. We can now slide our motor shield into place. So with the motor shield in place, make sure that the hole through that shield lines up with the hole in the actual motor mount. And then carefully slide that mounting bolt all the way through. Line it up with the opening in that shield. Once we have that bolt through both pieces, and then tighten it. Make sure it's tightened securely. And next, we'll reinstall the wire harness, fit it into the opening, and press it in firmly so that both locking tabs engage. And now we're ready to stand the dishwasher back up. Now that we have the dishwasher pushed back into the cabinets, we can reconnect our drain and our inlet water supply. We can also turn on the power and our repair is complete.